On November 15, 2008, one of the biggest ship, MV Sirius Star, owned by Saudi, was hijacked by Somali pirates. It was carrying about 2 million barrels of crude oil, worth approximately $100 million at that time. Today, the same 2 million barrels cost around $143 million. It was one of biggest hijacked in history. After two months of negotiation, a ransom of 3 million was reportedly paid for the release of the ship with 25 crew members. Again on May 23, 2024, the Liberian flagged cargo vessel, Basilisk was hijacked by Somali pirates on the east of Mogadishu. The ship had departed from Rotterdam, Netherlands, made a stop at Porto Grande in Cape Verde, and was en route to the port of Jubal Ali in Dubai. But question rise here, why so many hijacked occur in that area, and why Somalia is famous for hijacking ships? Actually, Somalia is one of the poorest country in the world. Due to three decades of civil war and political fragmentation, Somalia is also one of the poorest country in Africa. It doesn't have proper school and hospital, which makes hard to live there. You can think of place without a proper school and hospital, how hard it will be to live there. That's the condition of Somalia. On the other hand, it is also experiencing more frequent and long-lasting droughts, which make difficult to farm. Somalia has one of the longest coastline in Africa. So, you may think, fishing should be the largest source of income but, here is a catch. The foreign countries seize the country's situation and dump waste and pollution in Somali water. Due to this, it kills millions of fish. Also, European vessels have engaged in IUU fishing in Somali waters. This include fishing without proper license or exceeding quotes. They steal around 300 million worth of fish and left little for Somalians. They have per capita income of $776, which means per person makes $2.12 per day. On the other hand, one hijack makes average of 2 to 5 million. But the single attack cost around $30,000. So they find the investor from Pirate Stock Exchange. While, Big companies like Apple have 26.31% profit margin, Tesla have 14%, interestingly, Pirates have 30-50% to profit margin. In 2009, Pirate Stock Exchange was opened in Somalia, where local investors can invest their money, weapons and other resources, or, they can also directly take part in the hijacking mission, and share the profit resulting from Pirates' ransom. The pirates groups are always surveying trade routes to find prospects. When they find any worthy cargo ships to attack, they turn into the pirate stock exchange to fund their expedition. Anybody can invest in expedition in form of food, weapons or hard cash. When they have all the proper equipment, about 4 to 20 pirates start to follow their target in one mother ship. They follow up to 800 miles of the coast. Once they get close to the target, they switch to one or two caser boats and use rope and ladder to board the ship. Of course, ships and their crews often take defensive measures against pirates to protect themselves and their cargo. But if the pirates board the cargo, they destroy the communication of captain. They takes to nearby port. Somalian pirates doesn't sell cargo goods to black market like other pirates, but they make hostage to crew members, then ask for money to release them. There will be one-to-one -one negotiation between pirates and cargo owner. The pirates outline their demands, which typically include a ransom for the safe release of the crew and vessel. Negotiations may involve back-and-forth discussions to reach a mutually acceptable ransom amount. This process can be tense and complex, with both sides attempting to protect their interests while seeking a resolution that minimizes harm and maximizes their gain. In some cases, professional negotiators, mediators, or even government representatives may become involved to facilitate negotiations and ensure the safety of the crew and cargo. Once an agreement is reached, arrangements for payment of the ransom are made. The payment is made in an interesting way. The money is sealed and drop out of an aircraft by parachute. 
The pirates collect the money after it fell into the water. They take it to ship and start to count. After that, they release the hostage and cargo. Remember that, as time goes on, the value of ship is down and the ransom amount goes up. Let's understand it better example. Imagine a tanker carrying a large shipment of crude oil is hijacked by pirates in a remote maritime region. Crude oil has a limited shelf life due to various factors such as temperature changes and exposure to air, which can lead to its degradation and eventual loss of value. If the negotiation time is more, they can loss millions of dollars. When they receive amount, 30% is received by investors, 10% port fees and rest, 60% is for attackers.